Overwatch 2 will have a 5v5 game mode, new Resident Evil 4 remake leaks, and Crisis 2 Remaster is hinted by Crytek. Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back once again to Gamer Connect. My name is Abhi, aka Game in Madness, and you guys are watching top gaming news of this very week. But before we go ahead, make sure to hit that like button because that helps us out a very much lot. After the launch of a bit questionable Crisis Remaster, it looks like it's time for the remaster of Crisis 2, which probably doesn't need a remaster. I mean, if you really look at it, Crisis 2 still looks so amazing even now, even in 2021, the Crytek engine that was used for Crisis 2 still is a bang for the buck, which means it is still awesome. But it looks like they're going to do it anyway because Crytek tweeted out saying, They used to call me Prophet. Remember me. It didn't say remember me, but it was just they used to go in the Prophet. Now, if you don't know yet, that is the opening cinematic line of Prophet from the game Crisis 2, which means the Crisis 2 remaster is definitely happening. And if you think that this tweet does not mean anything, well, then they posted out an image of Crisis 2. So, yeah, it's definitely happening. To be honest, it was bound to happen. Ever since the release of Crisis Remaster, which saw its well, fair share of hatred initially, but then it came out fine, although the game still does not have a quick save option, which makes no sense, it is kind of obvious that Crisis 2 will get a remaster, and maybe in the future, we might get Crisis 3, which I seriously don't want it to be remastered. It still looks good. Crytek, look at your own games. <laughs> Crisis 2 was a really good game continuing the story of Crisis, but mainly the story of Prophet, which then continues in Crisis 3. But this game in particular is inside the city rather than being in an island, which makes a big difference. There were some changes to the game as well. For example, you don't have ultimate speed per se, but when you run, you do take up energy. And maximum armor actually feels like armor. And there's much more. Well, what do you guys think of Crisis 2 Remaster? Do you think that they should go for this game regardless? And what do you think about Crisis 2 in general? I know a friend of mine who told me back in school, I think, when Crisis 2 came out, he said this game is worse than Crisis. I don't know about that. I found it very good, to be honest. Last week, we saw the dev stream of Overwatch 2 where they talked about the PvP side of the game and they showed us some interesting changes. One of them was the change of gameplay from 6v6 to a 5v5. This will also change the team formation. So now you're limited to one tank. 2 DPS and 2 support. Of course, this has its disadvantages, especially for tank players. We have been playing as 2 tanks, 2 DPS and 2 support uh, characters for the last 5 years. Not only that, ever since Roll Q came in, that was the formation that everybody went with. So suddenly changing into a 1 tank per team would be a bit hard. According to the game director Aaron Keller, he believes that having 1 tank per team is better and less chaotic than 2 tanks and other players in the team will have the opportunity to carry their team to victory. Well, I don't know what he's talking about because in my opinion, two tanks are not chaotic at all. If the team needs to be carried to victory, there should be some people who should be playing well in order to carry that team to the victory. Rather than removing one tank player from the team, that does not work. Now this change is not going to be only with the team formation, but also how the tanks play. Some of the tanks will have secondary fire. For example, Winston, has an electric beam type fire which acts like a ranged weapon or a ranged damage that he can give to a longer distance. Zarya will now have two bubble charges, so she can use two bubble charges on herself or to her teammates. According to the game director, they are trying to make some of the tanks a bit more hybrid. As of right now, there are mixed opinions on these changes. Some believe that it's a good change and they would love to try it out, while others believe that it's gonna make it rough for everyone to play and also the fact that Overwatch 2 and Overwatch are basically the exact same game. The stream also showcased a lot of new maps that are interestingly designed. Some of these are for payload while some are for push mode, which is a new PvP mode added to the game where a huge robot will be pushing something and if the other team starts attacking, he will back off like a coward. My favorite map was Monte Carlo because the design of it was pretty interesting and it was a little bit bigger in my opinion. Overall, Overwatch 2 looks very similar to that of Overwatch and it looks like it's much of a big update than a new game, which is what they're planning to release it as. PvP will be shared across both the games, which means if you don't have Overwatch 2 but you want to play PvP, then all the PvP modes from Overwatch 2 will be transferred to Overwatch. That's what Blizzard said when they announced Overwatch 2. 
well, you never know what Blizzard will do. Maybe they will change the whole thing and you will have to buy Overwatch 2 to play the PvP mode. After Resident Evil Village, what is going to be next for Resident Evil? Will it be Resident Evil 9 or a remake of an older game? Well, it looks like it's going to be a remake because everybody wants to live in nostalgic moments. Since last year, there were rumors surrounding Resident Evil 4 Remake and many believe that that is going to be the game for 2021. But instead, it was Resident Evil Village. But now, there are furthermore new leaks coming out for Resident Evil 4 Remake. This leak came out from a Reddit user post which has now been removed, where a new logo for Resident Evil 4 Remake was shown as well as many other things were mentioned, such as the game will have an option for both first person and third person perspective. This seems kind of odd because having two perspectives in one game is something that Capcom has never done. The game will apparently be bigger and will be semi-open worlds. We will get to see Leon with the beard, Ada and apparently Claire Redfield who was never in the original Resident Evil 4, which is interesting. The voice actors of Leon and Ada from Resident Evil 2 Remake will make a return in Resident Evil 4 Remake, which is, which is a good one. Also, the game will be connected to Resident Evil 2 Remake, Resident Evil 3 Remake and Resident Evil 8. And the release date for the game is also mentioned to be 2023. Now these are rumors, so you should not take this very seriously, but regardless, Resident Evil 4 is a very exciting game and I'm very much excited for the remake of that game. Resident Evil 4 for many people is the best Resident Evil game out there. It's not the scariest because that's the classic Resident Evil game. This one is actually, I don't know, a fan favorite I believe. Apparently, according to the leak, after the criticism of Resident Evil 3 Remake, Capcom took that criticism to heart and are making sure that Resident Evil 4 Remake is identical to the original game as much as they can so that they can please the fans when the remake comes out. Resident Evil Village also tried to take inspiration from Resident Evil 4 itself, which you can clearly see when you're playing that game. So you can clearly see again that Resident Evil 4 is like kind of a benchmark for Resident Evil franchise. And so bringing that into a remake or remaking that game, I think it's going to be pretty fantastic. What do you guys think about Resident Evil 4? Let me know in the comments below. I really love Resident Evil 4 because that was my first Resident Evil game and I got scared and I never played that game again. Yeah, let's move along to the next news. Loads of rumor keep on suggesting the fact that Starfield will be present in E3 of this year with a release date. This first came from a Twitter user by the name Luke Stephens who told that Starfield is pretty much done. And this year, all they were trying to do is to polish the game as much as they can to perfection and release the game. That was quickly told false by the very reliable Jason Scryer who told that the whole thing is false and the game is nowhere near done. According to him, they will still be present in E3 to announce a release date which most probably is going to be 2022. And that's about it. Rumors keep on coming for a variety of games every now and then but the fact that these games will take much more time than ever and what these false rumors does, it just excites people for no possible reason because then the announcement does not happen or you don't get a gameplay reveal and people just get angry because of the fact that E3 or any other conference did not show a game reveal. Although Starfield is going to be present in E3, just showing off the release date. So don't expect a gameplay. It looks like it's going to be another one of those cinematic trailer of some kind and maybe a first few looks. As E3 is coming next month, a lot of rumors are surrounding for what could be the announcement in one of those events. One of them apparently is going to be Final Fantasy. According to this new rumor, a PS5 timed exclusive Final Fantasy game is rumored to be shown in E3 this year. According to username Naftra on Reset Era, who has proven trustworthy when it comes to Square Enix news, says that fans can expect at least one major Final Fantasy announcement in addition to the updates of the currently announced project that is Final Fantasy 16. He also says that there will be two big reveals. One of them will be a timed PS5 exclusive of Final Fantasy and the other one will be a cross-gen EDOS title. Navtra also says that he doesn't exactly know the schedule of the Square Enix but they are now guessing based on how much work is done and how far they are in and also their target release dates. Since this is a rumor, you should not take this seriously but if it's true, it means that we will get to see a new Final Fantasy title along with more updates on Final Fantasy 16. Earlier we saw an announcement for Final Fantasy 7 Integrate which is another exclusive for PS5, it's just enhancing the PS4 game for the PS5 players. Now we get a brand new game that means PS5 players will get another exclusive game alongside with Final Fantasy 16. And we already know that Sony has told that they're going to be a lot more exclusive for PS5 than it was for PS4. And maybe these are the few of them.
Well, that is all we needed to talk about in this episode of Top Gaming News. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, leave a like and comment down below what you think about any of the news we just discussed in this very video. And also, do not forget to subscribe to watch more videos just like this every single week. Thank you guys once again for watching. My name is Gin Manus and I shall see you guys in the next one. Until then, stay awesome, stay safe and make sure to have fun.